you know, Keith and I like to talk music. We, we talk music from time to time. And, and there was a, a recent album that, that came out um, by, I, I'm a big fan of these guys. I always have been. I've been following them since day one. Um, Def Leppard. Um, they've been around for about 45 years now. First time I saw him was in 1978, and that was on the High and Dry tour, I believe it was. Yeah, that was 78 I think that or 79. Three Mutt Lang, if I'm not mistaken. Um, actually, I think that was Mutt's first. Okay. First one. Well, here um, now. and then he, and then he completely, completely changed gears with Pyromania, that came out in 1980. Three, I believe it was 82 or either 83. I think it was 83. Um, I saw them on the, that high and dry tour. Uh, they were touring with ACDC. And then I saw them on, they were headlining on the uh, Pyromania tour. And then of course in 80, 1984, it was new year's Eve, 84 to 85. The drummer was unfortunately back home in England and was driving his Corvette and, um, he lost his, his arm. And so they had to take a bit of a hiatus. Uh, then I saw them again. And this is the last time I saw them was in 1986 at the Monsters of Rock Festival in Donington Park in England. Uh, they were not a headliner. Ozzy Osbourne was the headliner. And the Scorpions were on that bill, as were uh, Motorhead, Warlock, a um, couple of others, I forget, you know, who they were, but um, Def Leppard was there and they were awesome. It was the first time Rick Allen uh, played the drums since losing his arm. And they played a few tracks off of um, their new upcoming album called Hysteria that yeah. came out a year later, which was a pretty amazing um, album as well, sales wise for them. I know a lot of people lost interest in, in Def Leppard because of their, what we call cookie cutter sound, but well, that was if anybody, if anybody Lang. knows Mutt Lang, yeah. it's going to be Keith because Keith is the, the engineer of the two of us here, sound engineer, but, um, Mutt oh, Lang yeah, I, gotta, I just thought of this. I have a weird, I have a weird connection to him. Do you really? Yeah. Like I just didn't, you just, you just reminded me. So, okay. um, I, I went through, uh, I'm going to make this really fast, but I, graduated from a uh i mean it's huge at the time it wasn't as big but uh, it was a music industry school they had Mm -hmm. sony i think paid for a lot of the production studios that we they were nice yeah full-on high-end engineering boards equipment we had digital um we had digital technology back then but this was before you could go buy an imac and um Mm -hmm. And and when you know pro, basically Pro reports, Tools were yeah, yeah Pro Tools were basically yeah. yeah oh it yeah. was yeah we had Pro Tools rigs and it yeah. took up the whole studio okay absolutely so um at that time I was in that that school at, at in college right. um a friend of mine who was also in the music school who was a drummer it was my one of my roommates um had a, another friend in the program and mm-hmm. that guy was an engineer or he had just graduated and he was. Shania Twain's road it. I think he was her studio and her road engineer. Huh. And I'm not going to name names because uh, of like things that I he told me that I might let slip. But um, I, I learned to what extent her pitch was managed. Yeah. And w- what kind of equipment it took to get her to sing in key and all that stuff. Right. And. Right. But that, but you have to remember. So what? So how does this tie into Mutt Lang? Well, of course, well, they were married at the time, right? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, Mutt Lang changed the Mutt Lang produced some great acts such as mm-hmm. Def Leppard, ACDC, uh, Shania Twain. Um, I mean, he he basically, you know, you can say what you want to say. I mean, he he develops the sound and sticks with that formula for just about every every artist that he is working with. If it works, and if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Well, and this is sort of a conversation that you and I have um, you, anecdotally, but but honestly, there's a lot of truth in this all the time, which is, you know, 
at, at what point do you draw the line between creating art and, you know, making a business? And, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of people throughout the years have said, well, don't ever sell out, right? Like you do it to create the art, no other reason. But if you, if you can't pay the bills, mm -hmm. at some point you do have to compromise in there. And, you know, I, I right. think that's always been the challenge, right? Yeah, absolutely. It has. Um, I'm not real sure who the producer was on this latest album by these guys. Um, I, I brought it up, I think. Um, uh, You're going to make me leave my Amazon shopping cart? No, to <laughs> I got it. Um, producer is Ronan McHugh. Um, and again, Def Leppard's still on the Bludgeon, Rifola, and Mercury labels. They have, they've been with Bludgeon, Rifola forever, man. Um, and, so you really um, like this album? I, I do for a lot of reasons, Keith. Um, again, I mean, they'll never, they'll, you can't, you can't make another high and dry. That was one of those lightning in a bottle. And you're right. That albums. was, that was, I think that was Mutt Lang's first. That and was he Mutt also Lang's produced first. ACDC. Highway to hell. Right before that. So there's absolutely your there. Right. Yeah. And that's why they were on tour together. Um, uh, because Mutt was producing both of them and he suggested that they, they go on tour with those guys and open up for them. And unfortunately we lost Bon Scott that following year and he didn't get to complete that tour. And then like a year later, man, they, they pull out b back in black with um, Brian Johnson. And you think you can't replace Bon. Well, they didn't replace Bon. They just kind of moved on with Brian and created a whole other level of I, ACDC. I kind of like that. You know, I mean, um, I did too. I don't have a problem with that. I mean, uh, when you when you okay when you look at the bands that have done that and it mm -hmm. it tends to work more times than it doesn't i i think when you go the other direction which is l like like journey right like let's find right. a guy that sounds just like steve perry so when you close your eyes you can't tell i think you kind of have to with a band like that because and that vocal is such a trademark to that band well you know? but did you know jay well now you now you've now there's a whole other can of worms right steve perry was not the original vocalist with journey no he wasn't they, what was it like three albums they released before yeah and it was it was good but it was hard hard rocking too man yeah well that's well that's yeah it was it had a little bit more of kind of a uh soul mm -hmm. kind of but that's that's where they they found their, you know, their wheelhouse was with Steve Perry. Well, it was well. But, Steve but Perry then, was a great writer as well. But so. then you have the departure of David Lee Roth and Van Halen, and they didn't go. Let's go find a guy that sounds just like Dave. No, they said they, let's go get somebody better. Right? They, they were <laughs> okay. That's a whole other argument, right? <laughs> but they they were going for let's you know we're an arena band. Let's go grab a guy that can that can handle the arena audience. And and I. Honestly, I don't think you could have chosen a better uh, vocalist from that point on because Sammy Hager really did <laughs> catapult those guys to commercial success. <laughs> now, we've had this argument, and you guys can go back to our, where we, we we talk about it, Dave or Sammy. It's on our YouTube channel at youtube.com forward slash Parks County Gurus. Make sure if you're over there, hit that subscribe button, turn it from red to gray. That way we can get some love. Um, we, we keep growing, and we thank you for that. And that's, that's all because of of you guys subscribing to our channel. So thanks for that. Um, but so I think that Diamond Star I, Halos, Diamond right? Star Halos. Uh, I, I listened to it from start to finish and I had it in isolation um, with my, with my new AirPods pros and we'll get into the that other. Don't, Air that don't work. Oh, so this well, is why the, you like the album because you just listen to it in mono. Right. Yeah. <laughs> the pros. No, I, I listened to it with the pros. Okay. But I can't listen to it with my regular AirPod third generation because the left earbud does not want to okay. connect. So, and that's a conversation we're going to have in a minute, well, but I, I like it. And here's why I like, it. because you've got Phil Collin that is still that he's a great guitar player, man, a great guitar player. He is a great, he has a great stage presence. They, their live shows are really good still to this day. Um, Vivian Campbell on guitar, who came in and, and and replaced Stephen Clark after Steve passed away. I loved Vivian because Vivian used to be with Dio. He was part of Ronnie James Dio's band, the original band. Um, I mean, he had uh, Vinny uh, Vinny Apice and I think, um, oh gosh, I forget the bass player's name. But anyway, great band. But they they went on. Now they have formed a tribute band called Last in Line, which is 
uh, tribute band to Dio, and they have a singer that that sounds like Ronnie James to some degree. Uh, sounds good. But Joe, you can tell, Joe Elliott, lead vocalist, you can tell that he has met his limit on the octaves that he can hit. Oh, yeah. And he doesn't overshoot his strength. You, you get what I'm saying? And yeah. I could feel that in the album. And I appreciate that. And here's why I appreciate that. Because I, if I'm going to go see them, I don't expect them to hit that super high note. And, and why I'm saying this is because you got these guys that are still out there professionally doing this crap. And you got Vince Neal from Motley Crue that's been sitting there in Nashville eating Nashville hot chicken, putting on about 500 pounds and can't hit a note for nothing. Hey, Vince, listen to me. Put the chicken down <laughs> and go get in shape and go on tour because Def Leppard's going to blow you guys off the stage. Anyway, that's my that's my soap, yeah. soapbox. Well, and so if you guys have uh, a, an Apple Music subscription, or even if you don't and you want one, we'll, we'll mm-hmm. put a link to this in the mention on the podcast page. It's uh, yeah. Just go to yeah. our uh, website, partscounterguru.com, dot com, and uh, click right. on the mention on the podcast link, and it'll be a. What is this going to be? Episode one twenty five, I think one twenty five or something like that. Yeah, and and uh, you know, again, yeah. even though Mutt Lang did not produce this, they still hung up, hung on to well, some a, of his. It's a very different sound, and that in it itself is. doesn't bother me. I, mm. I think, I, it, I, you know, so I went and got it in, independently of us. Like I, this is the first time I have talked to you about this. Was right here on yeah. this very mm-hmm. program. And um, I was not as, but this is art, man. I mean, some people, you know, everybody has their own style that they prefer. It yeah, you like. Me I mean, like you like you. Yeah, because I mean, you like Sammy Hager, and I mean, we all know that there's no <laughs> better lead vocalist than David Lee Roth. So yeah, I mean, come on, Unchained, really? I mean, yeah, just a great album. But anyway, um, no, y- y- uh, you're right. Um, it's different. It's it's not. But what I did is when I, I know who they are big fans of, they are big fans of, and they'll tell you this, uh, T-Rex, um, David Bowie, those artists. And in fact, this, the title comes from the single put out by T-Rex, um, get it on. And that is a lyric in that song called diamond star halos. Have you seen the trailer for the new Bowie movie? I have not. I have not. It just watch it. It's, okay. I, well, I can't yeah. wait for. I've been. It's all I've been waiting his music, for it. right? Mm-hmm. It's good. It's, yeah. Yeah. It's. It, I, yeah. I. I. I am. I have Bowie work in my album in my collection. I have some mm-hmm. of his albums. Um, it, he's one of those that you have to. You know, mm-hmm. even if you're not, you know, an Ella Fitzgerald fan, you you have listened to her music. Even mm-hmm. if you're not a Duke Ellington fan, you are familiar with his work. You know, even if you're not a, give me some huge pop icon like you know, I don't know what Phil Collins. Peter, Phil Collins, yeah, yeah. You you know his work, right? Yeah, you may not care absolutely. for his style, but you you're familiar with why he was relevant. Yeah, right? Sting, 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 yeah. Sting's an yeah. acquired taste, right? Like he's mm-hmm. um, he's very talented, but he's not for everyone. Uh, right. he, he tends to lean, lean heavily towards the jazz mm-hmm. um, uh, uh, genre, and some people yeah. just aren't. But you're familiar with his work, and Bowie's no different. Yeah. Like even yeah. if you're not a huge fan of the music, you've you, you're familiar with his work. Oh yeah. So that was me going into this, and then you know when when I saw how this movie looks like it's going to be produced and put mm-hmm. together, I'm fascinated. Okay, I can't wait. Yeah, I'm I'm I'm, I'm more into uh, I call them rockumentaries. Yeah, uh, that I am anything else just because of the truth in most situations and the history behind it. I like to learn more about you right. know, some of my idols. Right. And Dave, uh, David Bowie was definitely one of one of my favorites back in the day. But I, I will tell you this, that this album, Di- um, Diamond Star Halos, when I'm listening to it, I hear some uh, some. A little bit of Duran Duran in there. I hear a little bit of U2. I hear a little bit of Zeppelin. Um, and some T-Rex. Yeah. And so I felt like I got more of their influences. Um, I felt more of their influences in this album than any other album I've ever felt before because they've, they kind of carve their way with their sound up through, um, 
pyromania. And then, of course, hysteria comes out. They had to change a lot of things because of the drummer. Um, surely had some limitations, but now he has found his way with his electronic kit and he seems to get around on that thing. Just no problem. I, you could never tell me that they had a, a, a drummer with one arm. I mean, it just sounds yeah. flawless to me. And that's, you know, he's come a long way with building his kits. They're custom kits, right? Uh, you know, for him specifically. And instead of using an arm, he's using a foot uh, in place of the arm and it works just perfectly. And again, I've seen him live uh, without, uh, with him with when he first came back um, just prior to the release of hysteria and they were great. So rock on guys. I love you. I mean, I, I, I'm a big fan. So, you know, high and dry, baby. Keep it, keep it rolling.